What is going on? Team, YouTube, Facebook, or whatever. Today, we're gonna to talk about fixing your overhead press. Let's talk about your overhead press and whether or not it sucks or it doesn't. And you could just be watching this because you think, I would like to know a little bit more about overhead pressing. Well, let's talk about it. So we're gonna cover a few key points as to what would make your overhead press suck. And we're gonna start with how sometimes there is just far too much lumbar extension and it looks like you're gonna to totally snap your spine in 400,000 pieces. Just a disclaimer, I'm not here to fear monger certain movements like flexion and extension or whatever. You need to understand that you are a robust system and you're not gonna die when you flex or extend your spine. However, under an excessive amount of load, there may be an issue. <laughs> Especially when you see the typical brosif in the gym, overhead pressing way too much weight. How many people have you seen overhead press in that manner? So what this really means is that when people open up their rib cage like that and stick their ass out, you get way too much lumbar extension. You are unable to create a large amount of intra-abdominal pressure and promote a circumferential breathing or brace around the spine. If you do limit the amount of intra-abdominal pressure and circumferential diaphragmatic breathing that you can produce or augment, you will inevitably not be able to lift as much. A really easy way to fix this is to just squeeze your glutes and keep your rib cage down. Sort of like you're doing a crunch, but not so much like you're doing a crunch. It's a bit in between there. And really importantly, don't use a weight that you can't handle just to look cool in front of the lads because Guaranteed, you do not look cool. You look like an idiot because your ass is sticking out and your back's all curved and everyone's like <gasps> Another issue I see commonly with the overhead press is too much internal rotation. What's that? It's gone. Too much internal rotation at the shoulders and this sometimes, most of the time, puts a large amount of anterior stress on the front of the shoulder. For this reason and a variety of others, like maximizing force outputs, it's imperative that the lifter keep their shoulders down and back so they depress and retract the scapulae. Not only is this safer, but it also promotes more range of motion at the target muscle that you're gonna hit so you can gain strength through multiple joint angles and promote hypertrophy because of the fuller range of motion. Sometimes this is a mistake, this next one I'm gonna talk about, and sometimes it isn't, but I think for the most part, using a staggered stance during the overhead press is not a good idea, as you could potentially be cutting your strength and size gains short. So a staggered stance just means you got one foot like under your hip and the other foot back, and then the back foot, you are up on your toes and your heels are elevated. So the reason I think this is not a good idea is because you can promote leakages through the kinetic chain and, you can, and that just means that you can't apply as much force into the bar, or you can't lift as much as you could as if both your feet were sturdy and flat on the floor. I think another really important point to consider is that using a staggered stance means you have less balance, and if you have more balance, you will probably be able to lift more weight. Some people report lifting more with a staggered stance, because, but I think that's because it promotes a little bit of lumbar extension, especially if you don't keep your ribs down and squeeze your glutes and it turns into like an incline barbell bench press and you use a lot of like your upper pec fibers to lift the weight instead of your delts. Another really big mistake I see with the overhead press turns it into a push press and then people still call it an overhead press and it's not. If you leg drive with an overhead press, it's not an overhead press anymore, it's a push press. There are certain population groups where the push press is specifically programmed. However, for someone who's looking to build really big delts and to get a stronger overhead press, a push press may come into play somewhere, but it's definitely not the main lift. For the most part, and this is very generally speaking, because I could make the case for maybe putting a push press in there somewhere, but for the most part, if your goal is to improve your upper body strength and, and, and delt hypertrophy, then using the push press as the main lift is probably not the best idea. Granted, you could definitely develop big delts and a really strong upper body, but that leg drive obviously is a confounding variable to consider. And importantly, the take home message is that it's not an overhead press. <laughs> it's a push press, two different things. So that's all the time I'm gonna take away from you today with this video. I hope you found it very informative uh, and you improve your overhead press. Also, please tag someone with terrible overhead pressing technique because they need to know. If you do see someone doing bad overhead pressing, what you should do is walk up and just pedigree them like Triple H onto a steel chair. No, don't do that because that's illegal. And if you could manage to pull up a pedigree, I'd be shocked. Hope you liked it. 
like it, share it, I don't know, do whatever you want. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you in the next video.